What is up, my new Vim friends? Today, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my awesome oil.invim configuration and some tweaks that I made recently that kind of takes it to the next level. And then at the very end, I'm gonna show you a cool little trick to incrementally add files with numbers. So watch to the end and I'll show you this really cool trick. If you haven't checked out the video on oil.invim and kind of how to install it and get up and running with it, check out that one in the top right-hand corner and put that in your list to watch. But basically, I used to use NetRW, and really that got me most of the way there, except for when I wanted to move files around. So if you're not familiar with NetRW, basically if I open up Vim, and if I do EX, then you can see that this is the NetRW listing. This is just in Vim, this is not in NeoVim, but this also works inside of NeoVim. And you can go into directories, you can go up, and then open up files, do whatever you need to do. So this gets you most of the way there. It has some different commands to create files. So like if you do percent, then you can enter a file name and you can create one and then you're dropped in here. Now this is fine, but really we found that oil.invim is a much better option. And for me, it's like one keystroke to be able to jump to the file system and quickly add some directories, move files around. And it's really, really handy to see kind of that in action. If we go here, we can remove we didn't even save that file, so we're good. If we open up InVim, then we will go into like plugins. And if we hit that dash, then we see that we're up here and we can go up a directory, down, open up a file, go back into our directory here. And the nice thing about oil.invim is you just edit things like they were a regular buffer. So you save and now you're in a file and it works just how you want to. You delete it, boom, done it's deleted. Awesome things and it can be really, really quick to modify files or move files around. Now I've got my new and improved oil invim configuration set up here. If you're using lazy.invim, then add this to your plugins directory. For me, this is in a plugins Lua file. You could also put it into its own separate file. And if we go back in here to oil, for any of these options that I'm going over today, you can actually open up the documentation, do help and capital O oil. And all of this is documented here. This documentation is really nice, so check it out. You can also see it on GitHub. So if you wanna dig further into different options or how you can customize this configuration for other things, check this out and this is really helpful. All right, the first option that I had and continue to have is the default file explorer. This essentially is having oil be your default file explorer. So you're not gonna use any of the NetRW stuff. For me, this end up breaking the gx command so if you hit gx then it'll open up a url i installed a different plugin this one gx.invim so if it breaks for you then go check that out and install that now if we go back to oil.invim then this is one that i added that i really like if you're deleting files then instead of them going into the ether and you never being able to find them again you can have this option which is delete to trash and this lets it go to a trash directory. So if we opened up a dot trash here, then we can see all the files that I've deleted recently and we can bring them back. So if we deleted them and put them back into the original directory, then it would resurrect them. So this one's really nice. Something to note is you do need to allow this for your terminal emulator. So for me, I'm using Kitty. And so I needed to select full disk access under the system settings so that I could write to the dot trash directory. The next option here is to skip confirm for simple edits. So a lot of times this is if you're adding a file, it'll confirm with that little pop-up that if you're adding something, then it'll say, okay, I want you to save this, yes or no. And a lot of times I don't need that. It's nice to be able to just add it and remove it and it just work. Now, if you do trash something, then it will prompt you like this. This again is for the trash configuration, but you can say yes and then confirm it and give you some safety of <laughs> being able to save those files. The rest of these options are customizing your view. Under view options, then you can configure show hidden and this will show all the dot files. Unfortunately, this does show the dot dot a lot of times. And so I removed that by having this is always hidden function. You can add other names in here if you don't wanna see them but I do like to see like my .env files for configuring environment variables or other things to be able to get into them really quickly. I'm experimenting with this natural order option and I haven't found 
a clear delineation of how it's sorting them, but the tagline for this is it is human readable. It's more human readable to see the directory and the file structure. So if you have been using this and you know a little bit more, definitely let me know in the comments how it's different. I'm kind of experimenting with it and I haven't noticed a huge difference in it quite yet. And then this last one, this doesn't really come into play so much, but whenever you have wrap on true, then let's say if we had a really long file name that took up a lot of space, dot Lua. Uh, if we write that and then we make our window really tiny, then you can see that it wraps. Otherwise, it won't wrap and you'll just see a little bit of the text and not all of it. So I like to see the full file name so I can do something about it and, for example, delete it so that we can trash it. So that's a little option so you can see that full file name. And those are the options that I added recently to oil.invim. Definitely add those and let me know if you have any other config options that you like to use. And as promised, I'll show you a really cool trick. So if you do 5o, then you can do file and 1.lua. And if you hit escape here, then this will add file.1 five times because we did 5o. Now, if I go up to this first one and hit control V and go down, and then I do G and control A. And for me that I have to do it twice because I'm using Tmux. So if you're not using Tmux, it should just work if you do it once. But doing that, you can see now we have incremented file names and we can now save this and create a bunch of files. So really cool stuff. You can use that in oil.invim because we're just editing in a buffer. So any buffer, you can use the same trick and add multiple file names or multiple variables and then increment them so you get a long list and you don't have to worry about manually typing one, two, three, four, five. Thank you again for watching this content, for watching this video. If you wanna see other NeoVim videos in the future, let me know in the comments. I appreciate everybody watching and have a great rest of your day.